Welcome to Mr. American Lit 18 and the Lit Nation, a tutorial in American literature. We're here to help you understand and comprehend classic American literature from Puritan lit, rationalism, romanticism, all the way through the history of America and into modernism. So stick around and join the American Lit Nation. The Crucible, Act 2, Part 1. The common room of the Park Proctor's house eight days later. At the right is a door opening on the fields outside. A fireplace is at the left and behind it a stairway leading upstairs. It is low, dark, and rather long living room of the time. As the curtain rises, the room is empty. From above, Elizabeth is heard softly singing to the children. Presently, the door opens, and John Proctor enters, carrying his gun. He glances about the room as he comes toward the fireplace, then halts for an instant as he hears her singing. He continues on to the fireplace, leans the gun against the wall as he swings the pot out of the fire and smells it. Then he lifts the ladle and tastes. He is not quite pleased. He reaches to the cupboard, takes a pinch of salt, and drops it into the pot. As he is tasting again, her footsteps are heard on the stair. He swings the pot onto the fireplace and goes to the basin and washes his hands and face. Elizabeth enters. What keeps you so late? It's almost dark. I were planning far out to the forest edge. Oh, you're done then. I, the farm is seated. The boys asleep. They will be soon. Pray now for a fair summer. I, are you well today? I am. She brings the plate to the table and indicates, indicating the food. It is a rabbit. Notice there's a note there about, remember, Abby Williams referring to E.P. as being sickly earlier in the play. Oh, is it? In Jonathan's trap? No, she walked into the house this afternoon. I found her sitting in the corner like she'd come to visit. Oh, that's a good sign, walking in. Pray God, it hurt my heart, stripper. Poor rabbit. It is well seasoned. Please note here that Proctor's lying to his wife Elizabeth. I took great care. She's tender. I think we'll see green fields soon. It's warm blood beneath the clods. That's well. The crop is good. I'll buy George Jacob's heifer. How would that please you? Aye, it would. I mean to please you, Elizabeth. I know it, John. Now notice here, he's trying to make up for his prior indiscretions with Abby Williams. Elizabeth obviously is disappointed in her. Cider. The farm's continent, when you go foot by foot, dropping seeds in it. It must be. He drinks a long draft, then putting the glass down. You ought to bring some flowers into the house. Oh, I forgot. I will tomorrow. It is winter in here yet. On Sunday, let you come with me and we'll walk the farm together. I never see such a load of flowers on the earth. With good feeling, he goes and looks up at the sky through an open doorway. Lilacs have a purple smell. Lilac is the smell of nightfall, I think. Massachusetts is a beauty in the spring. Now note the tension in the air between these two individuals. The winter in here yet is a metaphor, I believe, for a, their cold relationship. Thanks, of course, to John Proctor. And though it is John Proctor that cheated on Elizabeth Proctor, Elizabeth does feel somewhat guilty or that she's not enough of a woman for John. So there's obvious tension in the air. Both are uncomfortable with each other at this point. Elizabeth responds, aye, it is. There is a pause. She is watching him from the table as he stands, absorbing the night. It is though she would speak, but cannot. Instead now, she takes up his plate and glass and fork. She goes with him to the basin. Her back is turned to him. He turns to watches her. A sense of their separation rises. I think you're sad again, again, are you? She doesn't want friction, and yet she must. You come so late. I thought you'd gone to Salem this afternoon. She's worried that he'd went to see Abby Williams. Why, I have no business in Salem. You did speak of going earlier this week. Of course, Proctor knows what she means. I thought better of it since. Mary Warren's there today. Why'd you let her? You heard me forbid her to go to Salem any more. J.P. doesn't want Mary Warren with Abigail Williams. I couldn't stop her. Proctor's pretty ticked off at this point. It is a fault. It is a fault, Elizabeth. You're the mistress here, not Mary Warren. She frightened all my strength away. How might that mouse frighten you, Elizabeth? You. 
It is a mouse no more. I forbid her to go, and she raises up her chin like the daughter of a prince and says to me, I must go to Salem, Goody Proctor. I am an official of the court. <laughs> Hang on, the show's really started now. Court? What court? Aye, it is a proper court they have now. They've sent four judges out of Boston, she says, weighty magistrates of the general court, and at the head sits the deputy governor of the province. Why, she's mad. I would to God she were. There be fourteen people in jail now, she says, and they'll be tried, and the court have power to hang them, too, she says. Aye, they'd never hang. The deputy governor promises hanging. If not, they'll confess. If they'll not confess, John, the town's gone wild. I think she speak of Abigail, and I thought she were a saint to hear her. Abigail brings the other girls into court, and where she walks, the crowd will part like the sea for Israel. And folks are brought before them, and they scream and howl and fall on the floor to the persons clapped into jail for bewitching them. Oh, it's black mischief. I bet think you must go to Salem, John. He turns to her. I think so. You must tell them it's a fraud. Ay, it is. It sh is, surely. Let you go to Ezekiel Cheever. He knows you. He knows you well, and will tell you, tell him what you, she said to you last week in her uncle's house. She said it not had to do with witchcraft, did she not? Aye, she did not. All right, I want you to notice the note here. If you have your own copy of the book and you're making annotations, the witch hunt is now on. Hysteria has taken hold so that the town is caught up in the girl's silly game. Just hang on for the ride. All right, before we go any further, you need to take a look at about three questions here. Let's check some things. At the beginning of this act, John Proctor says, It is winter in here yet. Why is this pertinent to what is going on? That's the first part of that question I want you to ask. And also, what is it a metaphor pertaining to? I mentioned that whenever I was reading that to you. So go back in the tape video if you have to. Second question, why has Mary Warren disobeyed her employers and gone to Salem. What is she working on? What is she a blank a blank? And the third question at this point, let's ask, what did Abigail Williams reveal to John Proctor? Elizabeth reminds him of this. Okay, so remember in the conversation about what really happened out in the forest between Abigail and John a few pages ago. Elizabeth reminds him of this just now. Back to the fun. God forbid you keep that from the court, John. I think they must be told. Aye, they must, they must. It is a wonder they do believe her. I would go to Salem now, John. Let you go tonight. I'll think on it. You cannot keep it, John. I know I cannot keep it. I say I will think on it. Good, then let you think on it. She stands and starts to walk out of the room. I am only wondering how I may prove what she told me, Elizabeth. If the girl's a saint now, I think it is not easy to prove she's a fraud and the town gone so silly. She told it to me in a room alone. I have no proof of it. You were in a lo alone with her? For a moment alone, I. Why, then, is it not you to as you told me? For a moment, I say, the others come in soon after. Quietly, she has suddenly lost faith in him. Do you, as you wish, then, she starts to turn. Woman, I'll not have your super suspicion any more. I have no. I'll not have it. Then let you not earn it. I doubt me. You doubt me yet. Elizabeth says with a smile to keep her dignity, John, if it were not Abigail that you must go to hurt, would you falter now? I think not. Now look you. I see what I see, John. You will not judge me more, Elizabeth. I have good reason to think before I charge fraud on Abigail, and I will think on it. Let you look to your own improvement before you go to judge your husband any more. I have forgot, Abigail, and, and I, spare me. You forget nothing and forgive nothing. Learn, charity woman. I have gone tiptoe in this house all seven months since she is gone. I have not moved from there to there without, I think, to please you. And still an everlasting funeral marches round your heart. I cannot speak, but I am doubted. Every moment judged for lies as though I come into a court when I come into this house. John, you're not open with me. You saw her with the crowd, you said. Now you. I all plead my honesty no more, Elizabeth. John, I am only... No more. I should have roared you down when we first told when 
first told you told me of your suspicion, but I wilted, and like a Christian I confessed, confessed some dream. I must have mistaken you for God that day. But you're not, you're not. Let you remember it. Let you look sometimes for the goodness of me, and judge me not. I do not judge you. The magistrate sits in your heart that judges you. I never thought you but a good man, John, only somewhat bewildered. Elizabeth is telling John, says, don't blame me. This is your this is your causing and your conscience, not mine. Another note at this point is JP is feeling guilty, trying to shift the blame to Elizabeth Proctor by whining and complaining for forgiveness. All right, let's check and see how well we're getting it. First thing we want to look at is why hasn't John told the court what he knows? And what does Elizabeth attribute his not telling to? All right, it's very significant. All right, and you will find him, uh, you'll find us answer this question around page 52 or on page 52. And the second one question we're looking at is what lie did John Proctor tell Elizabeth, which makes her more suspicious about him? You're also going to find the answer to that question on page 52. And the third one, third question is what does Mary Warren reveal to John and Elizabeth about with the trials? And the answer to that you'll find on pages 53 and 54. All right, back to more to the hysteria. Proctor says, oh, Elizabeth, your justice would freeze beer. Another metaphor for how cold she is. How do you go to Salem when I forbid it? Of course, this is John saying this to Mary Warren when she enters. Do you mock me? I'll whip you and dare leave this house again. Again, Proctor referring to Mary Warren. Strangely, she doesn't resist him, but hangs limply by his grip. I am sick. I am sick, Proc Mr. Proctor. Pray, pray, hurt me not. My insides are all shuddery, and I am in the proceedings all day, sir. Proctor, with draining anger, curiosity is draining it. And what are these proceedings here? When will you proceed to keep this house, as you are paid nine pound a year to do, and my wife not wholly well? Instead of compensate, Mary goes to Elizabeth with a small rag doll. I made a gift for you today, Goody Proctor. I had to sit long hours in the chair and pass the time with sewing. Why, thank you. It's a fair puppet. We must all love each other now, Goody Proctor. I indeed, we must. I'll get up early in the morning and clean the house. I must sleep now. So she turns and starts off. Mary, is it true? There be fourteen women arrested? No, sir. There be thirty-nine now. Why, she's weeping. What ails you, child? Mary Warren continues, Goody Osborne will hang. Notice, this is one of the names mentioned by Mrs. Putnam and Tituba. Hang? Hang, you say? Aye, the deputy governor will permit it. He sentenced to her. He must. But not Sarah Good, for Sarah Good confessed, you see. Confessed to what? She, uh, she sometimes made a compact with Lucifer and wrote her name in his black book with her blood and bound herself to torment Christians till God's thrown down and we all must worship hell forever. But surely you know what a jabber she is. Did you tell them that? Mr. Proctor, in open court, she near to choked us all to death. How choked you? She, she sent her spirit out. Oh, merely, surely you. Okay, what was just read on this page and at the previous page will help you to answer question number six. What news does Mary reveal? Warren revealed to John and Elizabeth about the trials. That was the question we just looked at. You probably were scratching your head. I hadn't seen that yet. All right, continuing on. Why, I never heard you mention that before. I never knew it before. I never knew anything before. But when she come into court, I say to myself, I must not accuse this woman, for she sleep in ditches. She's so very old and poor. But then she sit there denying and denying. I feel misty coldness climbing up my back and the skin of my skull begin to creep. And I feel a clamp around my neck. And I cannot breathe air. And then, entranced, I hear a voice, a screaming voice, if it were just my voice. And all at once, I remember everything she'd done to me. Why, what did she do to you? So many times, Mr. Proctor, she come to this very door, begging bread and a cup of cider, and marked this whenever I turned her empty, and she mumbled, mumbled, she may mumble if she's hungry. You must remember Goody Proctor last month, on Monday, I think she walked away, and I thought my guts would burst for two days. Do you remember it? Guts were about to burst because of her guilty feeling for not helping a poor woman. Don't forget that the page number references... Or if you have this particular copy, I call it this the bonnet copy, of Arthur Miller's The Crucible. Now, for the answers to the six questions we had in part one of Act Two. All right, go ahead and press pause 
and take a look at the answers for the first three questions. Make sure you have the same information that I have here. If you need to add or eliminate or change, make sure you do so. And do the same thing for the last three questions. All right, this concludes the Crucible Act 2, Part 1. Thank you for tuning in for this uh, tutorial from Mr. American Lit 18. If you would like to be notified each time I upload a new video, be sure to subscribe and click on the bell. Be sure to click on one of the cards to link directly to some of my other videos. Good luck, and I hope this helps.